Hello everyone and welcome back to the Slow Car Salon. Now it's finally time to get to that hardest job that you can do on a Miata that I was talking about earlier, and that is the convertible top. The one on my car is 12 years old and has seen better days. It's splitting at the seams, the glass rear window has delaminated a long time ago and I have to seal it with home grade window silicone and it's just in really rough shape. So I got a new one here. It's also a canvas top with a glass rear window and this install should be rather interesting just because of the fact that I have a roll bar in the way, whereas a lot of other installation videos might show you this install without the roll bar in place. So we'll see how it goes. Let's get started. So this is the new top that I got, whereas the original one, there's my assistant by the way, whereas my original one is a canvas top from Robbins, this is a canvas top from Sierra that I got from Auto Tops Direct. Now, like I said, it's also a glass rear window. This one also has a defroster and all the connections to the defroster right in there. And this is also a zippered glass rear window top, which makes it a little different from my current one. And I got the zippered glass rear window because of the issue with the roll bar. I have to push the glass on the Robbins top over there past the roll bar every time. So having the zipper, I think, will allow me to drop the glass out of the way first and then get the rest of the top down. So I think that'll make things a lot easier. I also got a whole hardware kit with all of these straps for supporting the glass window, rivets, uh, instructions that came in a PDF and something that I also had to order in order to complete this install were tension cables. Now you can reuse your old ones, but after this, after this age, you might as well buy these because they're 30 bucks, they're super cheap, and you might as well replace them while you're in there, right? Anyways, let's get the old top off. So after the top is down, the first steps will be taking off the screws along the front bow because there's this little metal stay that runs across the entire width of the top, as well as screws that hold in these uh, weather seals, which after you remove that can be kind of pulled out of the channel very easily, like so. And then repeat, rinse and repeat on the other side. Then just remove all the screws for the channel for the weather stripping and then you'll pull the fabric off of the corners, off the top of the front bow and the sides, and that'll pop off like this, and then there'll be a rivet here, and similarly on the other side, and this is this one of the tension cable brackets, so we're gonna drill those out first. Then once those tension cables are off, we're gonna fold the top back again, and then down in the rearmost weather strip here, and behind the channels, once you've pulled out the screws for them, there's some more rivets back here to drill out, same on the other side. And then once those are out of the way, these pockets can be pulled apart, and this is where you'll see the tension cable start to come through, where it runs all the way up and along and comes out here. And we're gonna to wanna to pull that, see if we can pull that through, and through that little hole, at least to kind of just release this area from up here. There's also a loop of fabric right here I think we can try to pull off or slip off somehow and that will allow the rest of the fabric of the top to come down. And then one note is that you should pull the fabric straight and that'll make pulling the cable out really really easily like so. So you'll, you'll hold it up here and then I can continue to pull this loop through, pull on that. And now to pull the rest of the top away we actually have to remove this section from the center stay in the in this brace and that just kind of peels away like so. I started at one corner and worked my way along. Well that didn't go as easily as hoped sadly so we just cut along the length here where it was hard to pull out and was able to get the rest of the center brace uh, pocket out and now we can peel this off a little bit more. Okay good we're gonna have to probably drill the rivets for those uh, supports right there. Cool. And then finally, before the top comes back up so we can deal with all the fasteners around the back where the rain rail is, there are some screws down in here to remove which were very difficult to get to. What I ended up doing is getting one of these little uh, Phillips head adapters that puts a ratchet end, quarter inch ratchet end on the screw head. That way I can, with a small extension here, get the ratchet in, start the screw, and then with the adapter, which has a little knurled wheel on it, back the rest of the screw out and then you can pull the rest of this little corner pocket out. So that way now everything that's accessible from up here is free. So next, 
we're gonna put the top frame back up like so and pull the fabric back up again because now we need to access bolts along the back which we're gonna have to lift up the glass too in order to get it out of the way And just to make things easier, I also pulled out the passenger seat because I found when the top is up and I try to reach in back there because of the roll bar and whatnot, it is very hard to get back there. So now that this is out of the way, I can at least sit in this little space with when while the top is up and access all the bolts back there. All right, now that I'm back here, A, it is very dusty, and B, so here's a couple of the trim clips you'll have to pull out to get the carpet out. And then there's gonna be a couple of metal stays that hold the rain rail and stuff in place. There's kind of one in the middle, one on this side and one on along this side. So I'm gonna have to work along and remove all the clips and get the carpet out. And then it's gonna be lined with 10 millimeter nuts. With that all out of the way, we can pull these back and that will expose all of the nuts and bolts we have to address, or rather just nuts. So start working your way around. All right, with this roll bar in place, the main middle stay doesn't really wanna come out, but for the last one, it should now pop out and we can pull this out like so. Put that aside. And there's all the bolts and clips and things that had to come out and the other stays. And then we should be able to pop the rain rail out, slide the whole thing out. All right, so now the rain rail can be detached from the back wall of the, of the cabin here. However, to get it out fully, we have to get these rivets down here. I think those are the last that will hold the top in and then the whole thing can come out. Otherwise, yeah, the rain rail is pretty much all detached. There were just a couple of uh, clips that had to be pull pulled out back here. You can use your uh, trim removal tool to, you know, little two forks that can pop out the trim uh, pins like that. Or trim clips, I should say, they're just like this. So those, those can pop out and you can use a variety of tools, even broken ones, depending on the kind of space you have in there, which there is not a lot. But I was able to use these uh, yellow Harbor Freight trim pulling tools and that seemed to work out pretty well. You just have to finagle them in there a certain way. But we're so close. Yeah, so just these straps are what's remaining because there's one end that... Oh, actually, no, these are disconnected. How's, the, how's yours? Wait, check. Is the other one still connected? On the, the other one. Oh, that's already pu pulled out too. Yeah. Okay, that's easy. I guess we can now pull the whole top out. So. All right. Oh, my God. Look at that. Top is gone. Well, I guess now is a better time than ever to get in there and clean your rain drains because not only will there be crap in here, but probably drain uh, crap in the actual holes down there. And there's another one like that on the other side. But other than that, now I guess uh, that does it for a top removal. Now we have to clean up and then do the reverse of removal. Yeah, we're gonna have to take these straps out, which is actually going to be next because those that got left in there since uh, I guess they got pulled out from the top from other riveted in locations. So that should be just a simple matter of drilling these out. All right, next we have the tension cables and they are bolted in right here. We have the new ones that need to go in and the hook there is what I guess goes inside this bolt. And that's how it gets retained in there. We're gonna have to put the top down a little bit though in order to kind of snake this cable uh, out and through or I think we should be able to, yeah, no, because this is kind of caught in between the frame here. So we'll have to pull the top down and then route it out and bolt the new tension cable in. Well, there's the dried, cracked old top and there's the new one. Kind of crazy to see them right next to each other. The rain rail was so dry and brittle on this thing. It just cracked in so many places as we were taking it off. So I would highly recommend when you get your new top, you can get an option to have a new rain rail put in and these are like super soft and pliable and ready to go in. So I would highly recommend that. Plus they already go ahead and rivet it in for you. So that's really cool. 
Well, I wanted to get the new top in. However, there is one thing I am kind of stuck on, and it's the location of where these straps go that are meant to be for the glass support. And I can't seem to find where they go because on the old top, they were completely broken. So I have no reference as to which position they go in. I saw this little loop here. I thought that may one, might be one place where it goes, but there, there's no provision like that on the other side. Okay, it's another day and I did a little bit more research and as it turns out, these little straps for supporting the glass go through these slots, somehow make their way through the top and then they actually attach here where the bolts for the, uh, for on, the on the back of the frame of the car come through to it's attached to the rain rails. So you have, as you'll see on these straps, you'll have one side that has a single hole that goes into the bolts or stud on the back of the frame of the car and then two holes here and those get riveted to uh, the areas that are drilled into the third and fourth bows on the car. Now, since my car already had a Robin's top before, it already has these holes in the third and fourth bows drilled. So you'll have these little smaller straps that go across here and then the longer strap that then goes down and then goes to what I believe is, uh, yeah, the third. So it's like, say this is the left side of the car. So we have one stud, second stud, third stud, and the third stud is this one. So that strap attaches here, and then same goes for the other side. It's a one, two, number three. That stud there is where that support strap would attach to. Now, how to route it through the top is the next thing to figure out, but at least we have that. Final note before everything goes back in are these little second bow end caps. Now, I got provided some more with this kit, but they're meant to go on the inner edge of these bows to prevent the sharp edges from being exposed when you put the new top in so it doesn't get cut and stuff like that. So in my case, they're already here, but as they come with the new top for the canvas top, you should try to get those slid on before you continue. And if I haven't mentioned it already before, it's a great time to get down there and clear your rain drains. What you can do is get a coat hanger wire to shove down there, loosen up all the dirt, and then get trumpet or trombone brushes to run through the holes. That way you can clear any dirt through this uh, rain drain and prevent any water buildup from pooling in your rear deck here if that were to ever get clogged up. While you have everything out, this is a more than perfect time. And now that those are completely cleared out, it was very fast. I did the job just a couple years ago, so it wasn't really that bad at all. Just ran some wire down to loosen up all the dirt, and then the trumpet brushes through to clear out the channel, and that was it. So now it's a matter of putting the top back on. I'm going to first take the straps, the glass support straps, and get them riveted into the third and fourth bows. And the first strap will go onto these holes here, and we'll go on to the second strap, our second bow, like so. And then I'll put underneath that short strap, I'll put this uh, longer support bow under that and then rivet the whole thing through. And then once those are in place, then we'll start putting the top back on, first by reattaching the rain rail all along the back of the car and bolting it in. Now, something that's not necessarily described from the Sierra instructions is are these little uh, grommets that you put on the studs. Now, those are meant to go first up on the metal where the stud is and then your rain rail goes over that and then you get another grommet and put it over that and that should create a more waterproof seal. I think I see one of those seals back here already that I think somebody had put on from a previous installation but they were not present on all of them. So we're gonna make sure those all go in because yeah essentially the grommets get sandwiched by the rain rail on the chassis side and then the rear metal stay and the rain rail. So you have gaskets in both those locations. So anyways, that's going to be the next step here. This rear stay, this main rear stay along the back middle is by far the hardest thing to get in because you have to sandwich, like I said, those uh, rubber grommets. And since everything has been squished down like it has from when you uninstalled it, this is very difficult. So you would uh, probably be best to glue the actual grommets to the rain rail here. That way it sticks and holds in place and that way you can then push the stay into place while you have a buddy hold it up. So. Now at this point, before you cinch and tighten everything down, you need to come back out on the other side here 
and make sure that the rain rail is tucked in underneath this lip of the trim piece here. So you need to make sure that's tucked in all along the edge before continuing, before, and like I said, before you cinch everything down and then put in the side stays. All right, well now all the metal stays are in center and left right. Just have a bottle in place to hold up the glass, but man, that is an effort. I think at this point, everything is going to get exponentially more difficult because we're gonna have to somehow tuck the material over here around the corner. Um, this section here and there's a little pocket has to sort of go underneath here and then a small bracket then goes underneath and captures all that. Not exactly like that, just showed right, you right there, but that's kind of the idea. Let me do that, pull the tension cables through, route the headliner on top across the second bow, then wrap the front around the first main bow. Wow, well, we're this far, let's keep on going. And now before I forget, these glass top uh, support straps that I've riveted in before, they have to get slipped through here. Like I said, I'm gonna have to drop the glass by unzipping it and then actually see if I can tuck the uh, support straps behind uh, and bolt them into the metal stay or at least behind the metal stay somehow That way the grass the glass top can be supported and not be drooping while I try to work on what the next step is actually which actually would be to attach the headliner uh, And tuck it underneath the third fourth bow and then put it into the second bow here But yeah, I should probably get that out of the way get the support straps in and then go from there. All right, so one issue I'm running into with attaching these straps, as I mentioned earlier, so they're meant to go into the third bolt, like I guess the rearmost bolt for the side stays, and they just simply don't reach, even when you pull them all the way. And this is because this strap here, this tensioning strap, while it has an elastic member underneath it, the more rigid textile strap stops at a much shorter distance as the other one, as you can see there, which, because if we were to stretch, let's say that side to its maximum travel, that strap for tensioning the, and supporting the glass window would actually reach. So what's happening is this is a defective piece and is just simply too short. Whereas the other one still has about a half, a little over a half inch of material left in it to move. So, yeah, this is what I think we're gonna have to take out and modify in order to, and we're gonna do that using an old piece of the tensioning uh, strap from the last top. And just, I mean, we may, we may not even retain the elastic in it. We'll have elastic on one side at least, but we need to make sure that this is at least the exact same length. So we're gonna see if we can salvage an old piece of the strap and make it work. Yeah, it's a nice little feature. So now with that, that strap out, how does this reach? through the slot into the top down to the third bolt hole. I'm just going straight to the third. I'm not worried about the other thing. Just this is the slot right. It's right here, right? That's the one. Yeah. Well, can you reach the third bolt? We have Yeah, which is he which is here. Okay, you already found it. Or no, that's number 2, is it? That should be number 3. It's the right location. 1 2 3 3. It's even further back. Okay, hold on. Well, this is the stopping point for now because I'm running out of light and time because I work tomorrow. So I'm gonna have to unfortunately leave it like this for a little bit because this is proving to be more difficult than I thought at this point at least. Well, at least I was somewhat right in thinking that this was going to be the most difficult job there was. Maybe my approach is a more difficult way because I didn't remove the top frame, didn't remove a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, this is just how it's gonna be for right now until I continue at a later point. All right, it's another day, another weekend. It's time to get back to this convertible top. Now, previously I mentioned how the glass support straps, at least the ones that go across bows three and four, one of them was a lot shorter than the other. So actually what I ended up doing was taking some of the old glass support strap, cutting it, and then sewing the ends so that we have a new strap. I just have to burn or drill holes through it so that way I can put the rivets through. But this now should match the length of the longer of the two pieces. That way I don't have any trouble with the uh, gap between the bows being different uh, based on the fact that the non-flexible piece of textile uh, was maxing out in terms of length. So there's that. And I also have another approach as far as how I can get the rest of the top fitted in. Now, by lifting this up first, kind of show you what's going on here. So what's gotta happen is that this little edge and this pocket here, this 
kind of 90 degree pocket has to end up kind of curling. Uh, well, the, the flat part goes along here, then that pocket kind of curls underneath this area and then a bracket sort of captures the whole thing underneath. So because having the top bolted on on back makes this now so tight, I think what I'm going to do, much to my own dismay and the effort it takes to put the back rail on, is actually take all of the rails or stays along the back here off. That way the top is a little bit more easy to work with. Get those corners in first, get the brackets and everything in, riveted in and whatnot, and then bolt the, the top against the back. I think that approach should allow me to finish up the rest of it. With that in mind, I think it's time to get back to work. All right, so I got the straps installed up there. No problem, the new strap I made was just the right length, but I still have the elasticity of the band that runs across here. However, I realized now that I have these, uh, the fabric up here clamped to the frame, if I were to move the frame up, that does allow me a little bit more clearance to try and tuck this pocket in and underneath here. So I may not actually need to remove any of the metal stays around the back, thankfully. I'm gonna give it a shot and see if this works. Because at the end, then I'll have to get this, oh, if I can grab it, get this little bracket, and this is supposed to sort of slip in under here like so, and then it rivets at the back right there. And then this is supposed to capture the fabric in between the bracket and that little piece of metal there, and then a screw goes through it to secure it all. So hopefully this method works out, because if so, then I'm on the road to victory. Okay, well, it worked. Uh, I had to support the top frame being bent over with the side of my head, which was very comfortable, but I was able to get the rivets in here, get the bracket in down there, most importantly, and then, thanks to the zippered glass, I could reach in back through, through here and under and rivet it in. However, you can see the stick from the rivet or the shank of the rivet is not coming out. I'm having issues with the rivet gun there, but this is the method to do it, I guess, especially if you have the zippered glass, then you can access back here in that pocket. Of course, there's two more rivets down there. There's a small flap that goes into the frame. Um, see if we can locate it in here. I take that back, we're not gonna locate it. But this is thankfully the way to get it done if you've already got the metal stays installed in the back. So that is really nice. So after buttoning this side up, I tried to pull the tension cables through, but I found that this end of the tension cable that rivets up here ends up being too wide for the channel that's in the side of the top here uh, that you, you pull the string through. What you're supposed to do is, before even riveting in this corner, you just, is like I've done on the other side, is get the spring end of the tension cable like so pulled through from this side. That way then you can route it all the way through and down of course, I'll get this bolted in down here right before I box in this corner. So I think that's the particular order that this part now then should be done in. So I'm gonna have to undo the other side real fast, get the tension cable pulled through properly, and then finally bring the top back over, build the tension cables in down here, and then start stretching the top over the front. Well, while I was getting excited about securing the rest of the top in up here, I realized I completely forgot about the window support straps again. And I still need to get the rear stays off here to get that all slotted in place. So unfortunately, I still uh, have to go through that whole headache again. But at least to secure the sides, I didn't have to. Now, of course, I have to get the stay or the strap slipped through on the other side as well. And I think before I do that, I'm going to get the headliner in place here. Now this just kind of Velcros up against here and then this loop goes into the second bow there, but the headliner itself, I think is supposed to wrap around and come and cover the third and fourth bows and then come up to the second bow. So I'm gonna try that first and then come back to the headache of the rear stays again. 
Now to attach the headliner, this is also not a super friendly step, but it must be done. So you have to Velcro the two together like this, and you'll see that it has this uh, little plastic edge to it, and that has to come over like so. There's a second bow, and has to come, I guess because I have to use a second hand to do it, has to come under and then curl underneath and then fit into this little channel here. And that's how the headliner attaches. It's a little tight, but that is the way it's done. Oh man, I was so close. I was able to get the strap routed through and found the point back here, like between each side of the fabric here, between this side and this side, along the inside of the rain rail here, where the stud was, so that way I could put the strap in there. And then what I found out is it doesn't reach. And the reason why it doesn't reach is because, coming back up here. All right, looks like I have to remove the headliner to get to this. All right, so rolling this back a little bit again. I'll have to unvelcro that too. All right, with that out of the way. So yeah, essentially these top straps. So there were already holes drilled in here because these are meant for the straps for the Robin's top. And those are made to a certain length. And these, according to the instructions that I finally found, are riveted underneath. And that does change and affect the length of the strap that goes down to the third stud down there because if it's bolted from underneath, or sorry, riveted from underneath and has to travel down, that's a shorter distance than, say, where, because this is pretty much identical to its positioning on the fourth bow, instead of having to make a loop over and then go all the way down, which makes you lose about an inch or so off the length. So I am a little concerned about this because I, having holes already drilled in the frame here, I don't know how that's going to play in terms of structural integrity, having to do both of them again. Uh, but. I've, now that I finally found that bit that is supposed to be supplemental to the instructions, which is lovely, it says, see installation instructions, even though these are the installation instructions. So the positioning based on where these straps are meant to go is just completely different compared to, let's say, the Robin's top. I think I should be able to get away with these positions. It's just that I have to route the strap underneath and same with the long strap that goes all the way down. That way it doesn't lose length by going over. You would just be going under and then kind of make a straight shot all the way down. But what I think I'm gonna to try to get away with here without drilling any additional holes in the bar is use the same bow three to bow four straps like I have on both sides, but then try to get some more of this uh, strap material, it's one inch wide strap material, and make slightly longer straps that go from bow four and all the way down. I think I might just need an extra inch or inch and a half long strap. So unfortunately I cut the old ones already in order to make the new strap for bow three to bow four. Uh, and then on this one we have uh, this side, which kind of got a little messed up during disassembly, and I want it to keep it as structurally st st uh, sound as the other strap. I would want to try to fold it over and sew the end so that it obviously has more hold, but uh, that would then shorten this piece, which that would not be good. So I think I'm going to try to go out and find new strap pieces like this that I can cut to length, sew up, poke new holes in, and work with instead. So I came to the action sports and climbing section of an REI and apparently they have all this kind of webbing and rope and this one inch stuff here, 45 cents per foot, it's perfect for what I need. Might as well get like four or five feet of it and then modify it from there. And here I've just found a 14 foot roll of it, so this is perfect. All right, so now that I've got this webbing material here, all I'm going to do is just cut it to the same length as one of the old window support straps. Now, on one end, they do double it over and seam it together for some extra strength, but this new webbing is actually pretty thick, so I might, and actually, if we look at it, it seems to match right up with the thickness of the old strap when it's doubled over. So I think this by itself should suffice. So I'm just gonna cut two pieces of the same length, poke the holes, one side for the rivets, one side to go into the studs at the back of the cabin, and then, I guess try to peel away the top as best as I can and then try to get the new straps in and see how it all fits. And the new straps are made. I ended up using a little pokey tool here and taking a butane torch to it or propane torch to it and getting the end like basically, basically blazing red hot and then I p melted holes through the webbing material so they're actually very nice and rigid. I made two holes for the rivet side and then one much larger set of holes for 
the bolt side. That way these can actually slip over the stud. And if I have to enlarge them more, well, I'll just heat this back up and make the holes a little bit larger. And as for cutting, I of course singed the ends with a lighter so that these don't fray and come apart. But now we can take these and bring them back over to the car. Sneak peek. And now that actually I can get the top peeled away enough out of the way of the fourth bow right here, I can try to separate these two, drill the rivets out, and then just replace uh, this old strap only. And that should allow me to put in the new ones without having to peel away more of the top in this section than I have to. So, time to get to work on that. All right, well that was another huge faff, but now the tension straps are in. You can kind of see and or feel them behind the, the top there. Now we've also stretched the headliner back in and looped it into bow number two in there, having these uh, trim removal tools, but they're also kind of good as little spooges. They work really well to help guide the headliner into the groove, especially now at this stage where everything is much tighter. I also had the tension cables riveted in, so those are all now holding the top nice and flat and taut against the frame here. Now the last step is gluing the front. Now this curls all the way over, and this flap here goes against the front of the first bow here, which is then also captured by this long metal piece. So what we're going to do is we're going to have to take the top back a little bit to get some tension off of the top and then curl the front end over. And then, although the Robin's top from before had some glue under in this area, this new top doesn't. It only glues over on the front portion. So that's where we're going to apply our glue. And the glue we're going to be using for this is Goop. No, not Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, this Goop. Uh, this is a rebranding of E6000 you may be familiar with. Uh, it's the same stuff made by the same company same formula, but it's now just called Goop. But unlike Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, it actually does something. And this is what the, the kind of contact cement that we're going to be using. And instructions state that you put some adhesive on one side of your two surfaces. So we're going to put some glue back here. And then some glue on the front bow. And then those have to cure for two minutes. And then once those two sides have gotten tacky, then they can be folded over, clamped down, and it should be left to set for about a day or so. Full strength comes much later after that, at least according to the instructions back here. So anyways, that's the next step. All right, and now we move the top back. This is actually much easier. We just have a bottle sitting there that's propped up against where bows three and four are. And now we have plenty of slack and plenty of room to work on this. And it's nice and vertical, so it's really, really easy to work with. Alright, not too bad, but damn that glue is really really good. Very nice and tacky. We also made sure that after clamping the corners down, we pulled the top over. That way this edge here could be pulled nice and taut so that when it sets, it's already nice and tight. So we're just going to let it sit like this overnight. That way everything can dry up. You get everything at least as close to full strength as possible, but almost there. Okay, it's been about 24 hours. The glue up front has dried. Everything's nice and taut. However, I run into an issue yet again. 
So the tension straps back here that I had previously made ended up also not being the correct length because even with a little bit of tension, I simply now cannot close the top and the culprit is these straps because they are ending up being the tightest thing and it's pulling against them and like the rest of the top is just not tightening up. So unfortunately I have to go back in there and change the straps out again. Not fun, but gotta do what must be done. Whoa, 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 hold up, hold up. Wait, just one moment there. This is Alex from the future here. And I've come to tell you that you do not need to lengthen those support straps from Beaufort to the chassis because the top has to do some pretty significant stretching from the state of where it's been uninstalled and then for where you actually latch it onto the body of the car and then from there the canvas material will stretch out. So you actually need to leave the length of the support straps unaltered because if you do lengthen then, even though you stretch the top out, those aren't going to necessarily stretch or change length. You want bow number four to be pulled back as far as possible. So from here on, disregard anything I say or show about lengthening those straps. All right, future Alex out. But also interestingly, bow number four is not being pulled back all the way into this little pocket here because this seam kind of indicates where this edge of a little pocket exists. And I think bow four is supposed to be pulled all the way back to that point because the strap connecting bows two, sorry, bows three and four are definitely not fully taut. All right, so I've now put support straps in from bow four down to the pockets here that are one and a half inches longer than the old ones were. And that has helped a little bit with the over tensioning here, but it still hasn't helped getting bow number four pulled over a little bit further because although we're closer, I still can't get the top quite close enough. I think just because I haven't really had the top out in the sun or anything like that, it is sunny and warm out now. I may just leave the car to sit outside, put some weight on the top and get it to stretch out just a little bit. But as far as accessing those support straps, it is a little bit tight, but you can access the rivets in here uh, as long as, because the headliner is still kind of loose in this position. So it is, while that is possible, it's tight, but I was able to do it and bring the support straps back down into bo uh, bolt number three along the corner pocket here. So I think next step is bring it outside, get a little bit of weight up here on top of the fr front bow and get the back of the top stretched out a little bit. Alright, well insert one day later into the mix here and well even after a session in the sun I still can't close it. It's super tight and bow 4 is still not being pulled back. Something is holding it up even after this much sun and heat exposure. Maybe a heat gun is more aggressive and maybe the way to go for stretching this out but I still don't understand why I'm just not able to get this close enough because at least from today's stretching session I did get it to at least a quarter of an inch closer than it was before. After yet another unsuccessful heating and stretching session I now have two ratchet straps but now attached to the center pull handle and that strap is uh, down and hooked into the uh, lower door hinge. And now with some sun and heat hopefully I get that last little half inch or quarter inch. It is really, really close now, but I'm just gonna let it sit, stretch, and come back to it once it's done. All right, after another session sitting in the sun and everything wrapped and strapped, we got the right side clamped in, latched in, and what, what, and this is how we're doing it. I'm having him pull on this strap, and the strap is attached to bow number two, and he's going to pull. Ready? Yep, and this should line up. And we're latched. Somebody's got an idea. <laughs> great idea, great thinking. Oh my gosh, woo! We are latched, finally. Oh, here, let me get it out of the way for you. There. I told you, I said, you gotta do it now. Now or never, dude. <laughs> awesome, thanks so much, great thinking. And we didn't have to replace any straps or, or change the headliner position, which right. is perfect. All right, now it means I guess I can undo these guys. There's a man push. Well, now the top is latched, I realized I haven't installed all of my window seals. And to get to some of the screws that hold everything in, like up in here, uh, you have to unlatch the top. But it's not too bad because at least we know the trick now in order to pull it forward and get it latched. But it kind of sucks that I have to go back and do it all over again, especially to get down up in here in this little corner for the bottom corner seals because you have to push in these little clips. But anyway, that's pretty much 
it for putting the, the top on. And at this point, yeah, after this, let's say you may remember to put in your window seals and such, you wanna leave the top up for at least a week or two in the hot sun. And if you're in a cooler environment, then you're gonna have to leave up the top for a lot longer than that. Also, don't forget to tighten up all the nuts around the back of the where the rear metal stays are located. Get everything nicely cinched down and tightened. Other than that, that kind of wraps up the convertible top install. Now it's been about a week since I've had the top latched up and one thing I need to make sure we do here so that the top can stretch some more is making sure that you adjust the latches up here so that uh, what you can do is you just pull back this little uh, plastic uh, retainer around this hex section and you can tighten up the latch so that it shortens and essentially pulls the front bow even more toward the windshield. And you'll want to do this, especially after about a week or so and the top has had some, a chance to stretch out. You can tighten up the latches, make sure you do one at a time either side so that you don't have a super hard stretch trying to put the latches back on again. And then simply lock it in place and then latch it back on and it should go on no problem. Once you've done that, leave it for about another week or so and then your top should be stretched out. Only if, like I said before, you have nice warm weather in order to allow the canvas to stretch out. Of course, in colder weather, time needed may be longer. So finally, it took about two weeks for, to be able to stretch the top back over and be able to latch it without having to pull on it like we did with those uh, straps before. So now, the last thing I would recommend with a new top installation is making sure you keep up on treating it right. And that's with some of these products, which I'd like to recommend, which I've been using for years. Not only do they, uh, this, this Ragtop brand provide a cleaner, which you can do, uh, and I would recommend you do as you wash your car, but also this protectant, which adds a kind of a waterproof coating and keeps your canvas nice. And it's honestly why it was, you know, keeping my old top in such good shape for 12 years. And I guess the other cool thing is that it says tested and endorsed by Hearts, and that's the brand of canvas that Sierra and Robbins both use for their tops. So if it's meant to work with this type of material, then why not? So that's pretty much it for this video. I know it was crazy and the soup made took way too long, but you can at least say that you're proud and you put in your own blood, sweat, and tears into your own top install because, you know, trust me, first time, it's not easy at all but it gets easier with time and experience. And hey, maybe now you can help your friends on their convertible top installs too. So that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.